Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel, hope everyone's okay and uh, we're starting to build our engines and getting somewhere. I'm showing you the two differences between the Li um, SX, TV and the GP range. Basically the cams are, are different. The one in my right hand is a GP one and the one in the left is a um, Li stroke TV you can see the difference in the cams and that's also what you'll find the difference in um, the two shoes the ones on that one's a GP and that one's uh, an LI I haven't got the they come with little covers on cam covers which don't make a lot of difference to them but I don't know if uh, if I hold them can you see that's higher than that the holes higher for the spring um, the front one would have the cam there's a little dot on there facing downwards so that would be in that way facing downwards and the top shoe which would be that one would be on top like so if you've got that set up all the hubs are the same by the way apart from the holes in them um, where you put this plate on some have got two holes on the earlier versions most of the GP SX TV LI type series 3 onwards have got the free hole on the hub and you should be able to line one of the the holes up with that hole and a grub screw uh, Allen, um, Allen screw that goes into it so that would be your LI one with the dot facing downwards and the spring holding it together and this would be your GP one so in effect the GP shoes are slightly bigger and see how I've got to hold it unfortunately because I haven't got the spring in it but the uh, the shoes themselves if I tilt it down a bit so you can see it that's oval again to fit in and obviously when the cam goes it opens the shoes up um, <clears throat> If you put GP shoes with LI, you won't get the hub on. You can imagine the, the gap. It's not a massive gap, but it's big enough. Um, if you get it on, the, the uh, hub won't actually turn. If these uh, linings are worn off in any way, these are original GP ones in the uh, And these are original. They're actually out of a Series 2, which I replaced and upgraded to GP. Um, again they've got good linings on them there's no reason to chuck them away they just need some brake cleaner on them um, of course have a look you don't have again you don't have to buy very expensive brake cleaner I'll use this stuff spray that it gets rid of all the grease off of your linings um, on the cam which I'll show you in a minute when I put it into the engine um, you need to grease up this part with uh, with LM uh, at low melting point grease or normal grease any grease in there will do but the shoe side of it you want copper grease on there and again on on the shoes themselves that part not not these because they'll have a, a lining on them but you you put copper grease on here as well and it just stops them sticking and also on the pivot point put copper grease on the post on the the other difference between the um, early series 3 and the GP range is um, you've got this uh, let me find where the other one's gone there it is so you've got a, a flat plate and a circlip and then you've got two circlips that go on the post that hold it on uh, with the GP it's just a spring W spring that holds both shoes on so um, you can use either on either as you know I could put that on I'm not going to use them on the engine I'm building because it's a GP engine I want to keep it all GP so um, what I'm going to do is cut away I'll get the engine up and I'll show you what I do with this I've already um, as you saw in previous videos put on the um, the brake shoes that I'm going to use um, I will show you the the whole shoe that goes on them um, 
so you've got an idea of what that looks like and um, yeah I'll cut back in in, a, in two seconds when I get the engine up and um, show you what what we're doing we're going to put on the uh, the gear linkage um, and the clutch housing for the um, cables uh, just they just bolt down so there's nothing major on them like I say with these you've got two circlips one whatever there's the other one so you've got two circlips holding that that's a complete li part um, I'll put them back in my storage uh, box in a minute and I'll put these shoes back um, <clears throat> I bought these shoes the GP ones uh, had about five sets of them at one time um, they have got asbestos on so beware when you're rubbing them down with wet and dry to put face mask on um, you don't want asbestosis and <clears throat> start blaming me I didn't tell you so if you get the original brake shoes in fact any brake shoes I'd wear a, a mask while I'm rubbing them down and cleaning them up <clears throat> just to be on the safe side so I'll cut away and I'll put the engine up and I'll show you what I do then right we're going to be using the GP cam which goes in there all right and it's got before we do anything it's got a little shim that just packs it off so we need a little bit of normal grease multi-purpose grease is fine and what we do is we'll just put a dab around the end and put our washer on our shim stroke washer just give that a clean we want to fill up in there with grease and on the axle itself i we'll put some on there as well unfortunately the claw that moves it I've uh, misplaced for the time being I have to dig it out and put a bit of grease in there push it in moves nice and freely lovely right. and then we get our brake shoes which I've already had on before <clears throat> Clip the spring in try if possible to avoid touching the um, the contact points here especially if you've got greasy hands and there's the two I was saying shoe parts that go on the shoes so what we do before we do that actually is to get some copper grease and I use a brush and just brush the pivot points don't overdo it because obviously you don't want no grease going on your brake shoes put some on the cam either side it's high temperature um, grease which uh, is purposely made for this point so with the shoes they're these two pivot points I've got the spring on so what I'm going to do is put them both on just slightly on Can you see that and then I need a screwdriver to just wedge them in place so put the top one in slightly on and then wedge the bottom one down because you obviously it's easier to wedge down they're both on the cam now so all I've got to do is just tap them on right and what we can do is just wipe any excess copper grease off the shoes we will need to knock this um, back in a bit so it, I will put the, um, the the clip on, but uh, it will be coming off on a, a later video when I find the the actual claw. So just get yourself a pair of pliers, wedge it in. I will turn them and then just clip them in like that with bigger pair of pliers, of course, because I knew that would pop out, but. I just need pushing through like this. That one's all. Oh. She's sprung off and gone on the floor. Let me get another one out. I'll hunt that one later. So, where's the. There's another one. Here's another one. Push it on. That one's gone on straight away. 
isn't it always the way and then what I do is just close them in a bit around the shoes like so and they're not going anywhere they're not fall off you can actually bend this cam down as well which is what it's supposed to be like this one's a bit of a flat clip there we go and it can't wiggle its way off you can hit that with a hammer there as well bend it down a bit and that, there's our brake shoes fitted now if we'd have put the li cam in there these shoes would be out and the, the hub i have had him where the hub actually does fit where you know you when you get these brake shoes out and you're not sure what you've got because they you know you're talking millimeters difference in the pair of them they're not all all got the numbers on like these have got they've got the inner chenty numbers on but a lot of them haven't got the inner chenty numbers on 2204 gp 19 uh, tends to be normal series three and then what we're going to find the claw in the chenty one so i've changed also the um the oil seal for a smaller one so put the oil seal on the washer and somewhere reasonable like for that in fact you can go slightly lower than that because that's your your lever for the brakes uh, and then we need to get it on and in just to get the circlip in which is here we've gone for a 10 mil hopefully that's uh, should be the right size anyway kind of hoping you can see what I'm doing here that's it in I'm pushing on the the pivot points that's it and that just needs knocking in place now brilliant that's lovely and like I do with all circlips just roll them slightly I can't get that in the bottom but that's rolling around you can see that's not going to come off so we've got our oil seal on our, um, <clears throat> our shim and our circlip and that looks pretty good actually so that's our brake, back brake done I've got to clean up the, um, the pads but I'll do that with the brake um, fluid as and when um, the hub comes uh, it looks like I'm going to put a, a uni one on they seem to be a little bit cheaper than the um, scooters India believe it or not and uh, using them in the past they're as good if not better so I'll edit this in so you can see it and uh, yeah I'm more than happy with that That's, that looks really good it's on it's in the groove um, see if I can just knock that. No. I just like all the circuits pointing to the south. There you go. They are quite tight. I mean, there's no no slack in it. And as you know, that they're GP shoes, GP uh, cam. That's a, an old Innocenti lever. Um, they're all the same, Scooters India, whatever, they're all the same. I know this is a Scooters India engine, but there's a lot of Innocenti stuff going on to it. And uh, that's another job out of the way, so. I mean, again, there should be no play in that other than the on the splines, which is what I've got. Push that, brakes are opening. And that's how the brakes work, if you don't know. You put your foot on the brake pedal, that lever moves, see that? And that spring that's holding the um, 
the shoes together and the spring on the lever are what pulls the cable back. They are doing new cables now with a, a solid inner with all this built onto it. Um, personally speaking, I think that's the way to go. Um, I will, when I get around to replacing my back brake uh, cables and used up the ones that I've got, because I've got probably four or five sets there um, of different cables. Um, when I get to use all them up, then I will go to them. I, the name again escapes me, but you can look them up on the internet. It's a new way of doing it. It's a solid. This ferrule here for the brakes is basically um, crimped onto the cable or soldered on or whatever. And uh, it's a lot more stronger to use. But uh, yeah, that, that didn't take too long, did it? I mean, it's not in the best of conditions like shiny or whatever but I think they're all nickel plated new anyway so that's not not shiny I mean there's a new oil um, nipple there grease nipple uh, I'd say there's lots and lots of new bits and bobs in the engine so, uh, so hopefully somebody's gonna get a nice well they are gonna get a nice engine aren't they they're gonna get a a uh, plug and play engine and hopefully trouble free miles for for thousands of miles that's what I'm hoping for anyway uh, I mean I can't turn the can't turn the piston and that so the, the compression's good I was turning that if you remember with just two fingers so put a socket set on there and turn it over I say it's just a shame that all the bits are not here but again I digress so thanks again for watching, take care everybody and watch out for the next in the episode. Cheers mate, bye for now.